It's so hard for any Kenyan to forget about Amos and Josh, but lately they are doing the bare minimum to make Kenyans not forget them. Amos and Josh became famous after participating in this show, the Tasca Project Fame, which was held in 2013. The world witnessed their growth from young aspiring artists to household names. If you're watching the show, you'll admit that Amos and Josh were talented and unique. If you don't remember, let me take you back. In 2013, they performed a rock rendition of Nameless Song, Deadly. It was a flawless performance. To be honest, they are among the best to ever perform on that platform. And they are the only contestants from the 2013 TPF who are still remembered to date. They made a mark compared to other participants, including the winner. Even if they didn't win, the proof that the people who don't win TPF are not necessarily the ones with the least talent. After Tasca Project Fame or TPF, Amos and George proceeded to release big songs like Nerea, Motomoto, and Badai. Badai is an emotional tribute to those who have left us. Sadly, Amos and George for a moment left the music scene. They even got new names. Amos is now legend Amos and Josh is now Josh Mino. I know you're wondering why. Where is Amos and Josh and what really happened to them? Let's find out. Remember to like this video and subscribe if you enjoy this content. The story of Amos and Josh began in 2013. This is the time that they came together to form the group. But who is Amos and who is Josh? Amos' real name is Amos Wambua Mwema and Josh's real name is Simani Joshua. Amos attended Nimara Primary. He then joined Dagoretti High School and later Graffins College. On the other hand, Josh schooled at Olympic Primary School and proceeded to Harper Hill School, and later he joined the University of Nairobi. At first, people thought they were related, but that was not the case. Amos and Josh met after high school. Amos was already in a church group called Kelele, but after some time, they started meeting oftenly and ended up becoming friends. So that was the first time I saw him singing and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. so I, I admire him a lot. He was like a, like a role model, someone who you are, we all wanted to be in his position, like, because he was lead pale church, then later, uh, after a few years, to kanza kupata na kwa projects kada, mm -hmm. like tunapata na tu, like tunaimbi amtu backup, mm -hmm. tu kama iyo, mm -hmm. tunarecord kwa album yamtu, mumbo mm -hmm. kama Their musical journey began in church, as they began singing in a church called the Life Pool Gospel Church, and at that time they were still teenagers. They continued worshiping and singing in church, and they focused on church work and singing church music. But this will later change in 2013. In October 2013, Tasca Project Fame launched its sixth season. TPF was a big platform as it was being showcased in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, and South Sudan, or let's say East Africa. The show was similar to American Idol and Project Fame South Africa. It was widely known to provide a platform to train raw talent and prepare them for musical careers. How, how could we go on? It was so good, but now it's gone. To be eligible to participate, one has to be at least 21 years of age and be able to sing and perform or sing and play an instrument. The sixth season was different, as they allowed teams of up to three members each to compete alongside other individuals, and this means Amos and Josh could participate. From Kenya, let's give it up for Amos and Josh! The winner was to win an ultimate prize of 5 million Kenyan shillings and a one-year recording contract in South Africa. Amos and Josh auditioned for the sixth season of the TPF. Initially, they wanted to go as individuals, but their bishop had a different idea, and he told them to go as a group because they were already singing together in church, 
and they had chemistry, so it was wise for them to audition as a group. Remember Amos and Josh were church boys, or they grew up in church, so what were they going to do on a secular platform? Tasca Project Fame was not a crusade, it was a singing competition. So it was understandable for them to audition for the show using secular songs because it was a secular platform. Tasca Project Fame was sponsored by Tasca Lager, so obviously it was not in any way related to church matters. Their aim was to sing and win souls within the secular setting, so Amos and Josh didn't want to be put in a box. They sang love songs and according to them, God is love, and since they are Christians, they were the best people to talk about that love. The auditions were intense, but it was an easy thing for them, by the fact that prior to the auditions, they were practicing how to sing, what to sing, and how to perform during the auditions. And it's something they did for three months, day and night, with help of their bishop. Mm -hmm. So bishop, like, he, he was actually the foundation and the, the idea Your of bishop. St. Josh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's so we came together and then for like three months, even before the first audition, we were doing um, exercises. We were actually practicing how to sing. We were doing a few songs here and there that they were going to present. We were doing physicals, um, some, some debriefing psychologically. As a result of their hard work, they qualified and became part of the Tasca Project Fame Season 6, which had 15 contestants from different countries. From the beginning, they constantly marveled many with their high notes and no autotune. Their presence in the show was magical. They kept on perfecting their craft and sharpening their singing skills, performance after performance. Even though at times they were put on probation, they never lost hope. Amos and Josh captured people's attention after the amazing rock rendition of Deadly, which is a song by Nameless. This and most of their performances quickly gained them a massive following during their run in the competition. They kept on fighting with the aim of winning our hearts and also winning the ultimate prize of 5 million Kenyan shillings and also a one-year recording contract in South Africa. They won our hearts but not the prize, as Burundian Hopi Rakoze was crowned the winner of Tasca Project Fame Season 6 and they ended up taking second place. The winner of Tasca Project Fame Season 6, 5 million Kenya shillings. Doctor, give us the honors, please. Hello? The winner. Fans thought that they deserved the win, but the Burundian was equally talented and confident. Amos and Josh even said that they of course wanted to win, but they didn't. Everybody in the academy worked their hardest to get to the top, and East Africa voted for the one they saw fit. At the competition, people were voting, and Amos and Josh even said that their bishop was mobilizing the congregants to vote for them, even buying credit cards for them so as to ensure they voted. Which church what was this? Life Pool Life Chapel. Chapel. Life Pool Chapel? Yeah, yes, sir. they were really mobilizing. <laughs> I didn't want to buy out to credo. Now, after their last performance at the show, the judges told them to go out there and work hard because the world loved them and that is what they did. They started making music and entertaining their fans. In 2014, they released their debut single called Smile. Smile is a groovy African love song. The song was written by Amos and Josh and co-written by BN. I know you're wondering how they ended up working with BN. They met Sotisol for the first time while in the TPF Academy when they performed at the show. It was during the show that Sotisol told them to look for them when the competitions were over and indeed they helped them start their journey in the industry. Josh in particular has a long history with Sotisol because they all studied at Harper Hill High School. After Smile, they released their second single, Badai. On the YouTube page, they wrote that Badai is an emotional song, paying tribute to their friends, fans, 
leaders, and heroes who they have lost along the way. Their vocals in the song are out of this world. The lyrics are so well written and sung. This collaboration with Rabbit or Kinkaka cemented their position in the music industry. The song garnered success and to say the least, it is a masterpiece. Just to prove that they were good songwriters and they still had the ability to capture emotions, they released their third single called Zingua. According to them, Zingua is also a groovy African love song and it was a recreation of the song I Am Not Sober by Jamnazi Africa. In April 2015, their names became bigger with the release of Nerea, a song that they were featured in by Saudi Soul. Nerea's lyrics have a strong message against abortion, exploring the possibility that the unborn child could be a great African leader. Several leaders are featured in the verses, among them Kenya's Mze Jomo Kenyatta, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Tanzania's Julius Nyerere, and South Africa's Nelson Mandela. Each of the leaders featured has a semblance of a young Ahim getting ready to make a better Africa. The song elicited mixed reviews, maybe by the fact that they talked about a sensitive topic, abortion, and they were men, so why were they talking about it? When they appeared on NTV The Trend Show on April 24, 2015, Larry Mado even asked Sauti Sol what business they had policing women's bodies. Why are you policing a woman's bodies? It's the other not Nakuomba. 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 I don't think the policeman Nakuomba. says Nakuomba. In Tanzania? In Tanzania they say Nakuomba. No. <laughs> no. Listen, we've been called by police in Tanzania. You know. <laughs> no, but you know, like, it's Nakuomba and it's... I, I, it's a very tricky, it's a very touchy subject, yeah. you know, and we actually didn't realize until we released the but, song. Well, I'm going to According to Amos and Josh, Nerea is a simple love song and the fact that it attracted that much talk was justification that it was worth listening. Considering the fact that they collaborated with Sauti Soul, who are established artists, they learned a lot of things like songwriting and how to package their music for the market. Sauti Soul introduced them to producers like Sedo and people believed in their craft. They proceeded to release more songs like Motomoto, Dancinami, and Kupe featuring Ben Paul. Everything was falling into place for them until 2016 on April 4th after the release of their song called Heri Tuachane. Emo's ex-girlfriend got offended by the song, feeling that the song was about her, to the point where she threatened to unalive herself. In the video, it features a scene where a girl is cheating on Emo's with an older man or sponsor, after which he decides to end the relationship. The video was pulled down from YouTube. Amos, in an interview with NTV Kenya, said that he got a call from the ex-mom, telling him that the ex-girlfriend was going through serious depression and was suicidal. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. Tukaongea tukaongea ambayo about your wimbo ni nini alikuwa anasema ni kama vile nimeandika ni yeye ndo nimemwandikia ni kama unamlenga yeye ni kama namlenga yeye lakini kamwambia mimi sijaandika sijataja jina la mtu mnajua hakuna kitu direct kwa nyimbo kama hiyo lakini sasa ka insist ikakuwa ni kama tunaenda back and forth so mimi nikafikiria tu ni ile ni ile tu watu waongea unajua um so ika ikafika kwa phone calls ma whatsapp messages nini um wakati ambapo nilijua ni serious ni wakati ambapo nilipata phone call kutoka kwa mama yake. Mm. <coughs> Kaniambia imefika mahali. Mama yake msichana sasa. Yeah. Um, depression nini? Uh -huh. um, amejaribu kujua mambo kama hayo. Sasa hapo ndio ikani hit by the um inakubaya. Uh -huh. Though the duo had released the song to most radio stations, they had to take it down from other channels that they were in control of. The love saga almost broke the group. But the video was later uploaded on YouTube. And as I speak, it has about to 60,000 views. It's worth mentioning that the duo performed in major events such as Live at the Elephant, Piano and Voice, the Kenya at 50 concert, and at the State House, along other musicians like Eric Wainaina, Aaron Rimbui, 
Carol Atemi, Antonio Sol, Kanji Mbugwa, Sauti Sol amongst others. 2017 was their worst year. It was the beginning of the downfall of Amos and Josh. In their view, 2017 was a crazy year for them musically and on a personal level. It was very dark in every aspect, financially, mentally, and spiritually. Through a long Instagram post, they revealed the myriad of challenges faced in 2017, prompting them to part ways. They stated that due to their problems faced with their production deal, they did not go to the studio for close to a year. As a result, no shows were coming through and they became so broke to the point of missing meals and lacking rent and other basics. They contemplated going their separate ways, but in 2018 they made a comeback with a new song called Ukoju that was recorded in early 2017. Their challenges remained unresolved, and in 2019, Josh revealed that they amicably decided to go their separate ways to concentrate on their solo music ventures and he changed his name to Manio. Amos also changed his name to Legend Amos. Josh still wanted to make secular music and was ready for showbiz so as to push their music. But Amos was not comfortable with that stuff and as a result he decided to turn to gospel music. But the separation did not mean an end to their friendship or collaboration as they were planning to reconnect in other projects. First of all, we had a lot of noise around Amos and Josh. So you guys need to do this kind of music. Na mkatu kwa nambi wa mkifanya a lot of slow songs. Amta ito wa endi ya party. Amta ito wa nini. So we had to what we had to try and do some other type of music. Mm. So when we got into that, uh, utapata, uh, for example, Amos was not very comfortable with some of the things that were going on. Uh. Mimi na on the other hand, nilikuwa ni memeza your story. Ya pop culture and showbiz and oh. all that stuff. So unapata hakiki nini? Eh kiki vitu kama hizo. So up, you know actually hizo ndo vitu zilianzia hii shida yote. The breakup hurt them in many ways given that there are many business opportunities they missed out on. The other reason they separated was after their mentor and music producer Bruce Odhiambo died. Bruce Odhiambo died in January 2019 while undergoing treatment at the Nairobi hospital after he suffered a massive heart attack. Apart from Badai by Elmos and Josh, he was behind big hits such as Niache Niimbe by gospel singer Pitson and Ghetto Christmas by Abbas Kubaf and of course many other songs. So when Bruce just left, then that can now, it, we, just, we were just thrown into a king. We didn't even know. Because now we had to now think again from here, where do we what go? Next, yeah. yeah, what do we go? Where do we go as Elmos and Josh? What do we do? Like, what's the plan now from here? As a solo artist, Josh Manio released a song dubbed Ordinary Folk, a song he said spoke to him, his fans, and the nation. He was set to release his debut solo album called Mind of a Married Man. Amos, or Legend Amos, also released songs and he made gospel music like Yahweh and Ushuhuda. In 2021, they reunited and made an EP called Reimagine AJ, and they had plans to release an album. Away from music, in 2022, Amos tied the knot with his girlfriend Marcy. They exchanged vows in a regular Christian marriage custom in the presence of their friends, family, and relatives. Josh was also in love with Shep Chumba, a TV producer and host, but they separated due to personal differences. Their separation was unexpected as the two set couple goals for young relationships. They even had a vlog where they shared intimate and personal stories, but after the separation, most of the videos were pulled down. Away from that, Amos and Josh both seem to be serving the Lord now. Amos is a worship pastor and Josh is also in the ministry of preaching the word of God. In 2023, they got featured in a song called Sita Nyamaza by Chris Ero, and I hope that in the coming days, Hawata Nyamaza, and they'll drop more songs and maybe an album. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to like this video, subscribe, and of course, follow me on Instagram at ongori.reports.